Hey, today I'm going to do a video on how to change a water pump on the Chrysler 318. It's 5.2 liter. This one's in a Dodge Ram. You find them in Dakotas and all kinds of stuff. This one's a 99. So, the uh, first thing you want to do is you want to drain the coolant. On these ones, radiator drain cocks on the driver's side. You see it's right there. And with this one, some of them twist out, some of them pull. This one does a little of both. To turn it 90 degrees and then wiggle it back with a pair of pliers. I like to put a hose on mine just because you get a lot more control. You can land it in your pan a lot easier if you put a little hose on it. So anyway that's what I did. And uh, so like I say, first thing you do is drain it. The next thing you want to do uh, is pull the fan off. To pull the fan off it's just a counterclockwise rotation. What I like to do, some of them are reverse thread, a lot of Ford ones are. Uh, this one's just regular thread, and so you can check that by looking at the threads on your pulley. What I'll do is I'll take my fingernail, and then I'll rotate it, and if I, you know, start toward the end, you know, if I come off, then it, you know, going counterclockwise, and I know that it's just standard thread. Okay, after you've drained the coolant, the next thing I like to do with the belt on so I get added resistance, is I like to remove the fan clutch and the fan from the pulley on the water pump. So what I'll do with a lot of them is I'll take a hammer and chisel and I'll put it on the edge of the nut and hit it and it works like an impact gun. The impact from hitting the chisel on the left side of that nut uh, breaks it free. With this one and with some other ones what I'll do is I'll take a pry bar. Now this can damage a pulley and make it off center but like with this one, it comes with a new one, so I'm not too worried about that. So what I'll do is I'll take a pry bar. Let me show you on the one that's out. That's probably easier. I'll take a pry bar, and what I'll do is I'll stick it. Let's see, is this, this is how it sits in there. I'll stick the pry bar in between the pulley, and then I'll rotate that pry bar. I'm twisting it with my hand in the clockwise direction. And so while I'm doing that, it'll bind the pulley and the more it tries to rotate this way the more it'll catch with it. You can use a fat screwdriver too. It'll basically lock it up. It'll put a little burr on the back side of it. 90% of the time these will be fine. They won't bend. You won't ruin it. But now and then you know if you pull too hard or if it's so rusted that it won't break free easily then it will. And then I'll take a crescent wrench like a 12 inch crescent wrench like you see here and then I'll rotate it like that and then once I've got it to break free you can typically just take it and just spin it off with your hand if you don't secure it with the pry bar you'll find that it just peels out even with the belt on so that's one way to do it like I say another way is to take a chisel a sharp chisel and just put it right there it's got to be a good high grade chisel it can't be something cheap but you just put it on there and then you hit it with your sledgehammer what I've done is I took one of my uh, air hammer ones and then welted it to a good craftsman chisel. Uh, it's good to have a long one in the shop. Uh, what I'll do sometimes is I'll save an old tie rod end or inner tie rod end or something and then weld it onto one of these so that you can reach so that you're using a sledgehammer out here instead of in close quarters where you can hit your fingers. So go ahead and remove. The, I'll just spin this all the way off until it's off of there and then I'll go ahead and I'll unslack the belt and to unslack the belt it's just a 15 millimeter wrench on this just put it on there and then you move the top of the wrench say it's sticking on here you move the top of the wrench clockwise or to the right so I'll go to there and show you from there. I like to do an update when you're doing this I'm going to squeak this in earlier in the video so you'll notice I have a fan shroud on through most of I should have pulled it off to begin with it's much easier what you do you don't even need any tools to get the well you need one a screwdriver to get the windshield washer fluid tank out it's held into it by those little holes you can see these little nubs and uh, the way that it locks in is there's a hook there and then these slide in here so you take a screwdriver and you stick it in the middle here one that's long it'll get down in there I use this one and uh, just stick it down in there and then twist and then you just pull the tank up it'll slip right off the reason why you got to take the washer tank off 
you can leave it on, but then you've got to worry about your line leaking and spilling out and your plug and all that stuff. It's easier to just pop it out with a screwdriver. So you pop that off and you get access to uh, the two bolts. They're just little 10 millimeter heads. There's one down there, one up here, and you pull the shroud together with the fan. Same thing on this side. On this one, you've got just that one little nub to worry about, and you can get to it from the side. You can see that little corresponding little thing that it fits into. That thing goes there. So anyway, so pull those two screws out, pull that out, and we'll make the whole job easier. I use this as kind of a tool tray, and it's nice for that, but it's easier to just get it the hell out of there. So I just Okay, the next ahead. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling hoses and hose clamps. On this one, the hose is directly connected to the lower radiator hose to the pump there. And you've got another hose on this side, and a little spout that you got to work out. And then there's also one that's kind of tricky that comes out the top there. You can see the clamp for it, and that's about it. And I'll do that one last after I've unbolted the water pump and I start pulling it out. But when in terms of doing hose clamps, let me show you on this one. There's a bunch of different ways to skin a cat. There's a bunch of different ways to do hose clamps. One of my favorites is to use a long pair of needle nose pliers. And I'll put it on the top here. This requires a little bit of agility and coordination. But you can pinch them like that, rotate them, and work them back. Other people like to use, you know, like channel locks. These are good, especially for bigger hose clamps. Um, my favorite's a cable tool, a hose clamp cable tool. And with these, the way they work is that they've got a little set of jaws that run on a cable. And you basically, you hold them on there. It takes two hands to get them started. You have one hand hold it in place. And the other hand just start squeezing that little clamp tool. The way it operates is a lot like a uh, uh, clamp tool for doing woodworking. But you can see the more you squeeze that, it holds it, but it also locks it open. The scary drawback to these is if the hose clamp, say you're working with it like this, and this comes off, it will flick you. It will like make your fingernail turn purple and it'll hurt. So sometimes I'm a little shy of these, but in close quarters, they work awesome. So, but anyway, the nice thing about it is, you know, they get a nice full opening and then they also hold it that way so that you can work with it. But like I say, if you don't get it on there good and it slips off, you'll kind of wish that it hadn't. And slide it back like that and then you can hit the trigger release. There's one other one that I'd like to show you. It's like a pair of pliers with a little ball thing on it. When you look at them, it looks like they're chipped up or broken, but that's just to line up to catch these to get a good secure bite. But the way that they work is you basically, I don't know if you can see that, but you basically just get them on like that. These work really well with the smaller ones, with the bigger ones, eh, not so much. So anyway, lots of ways to skin a cat, lots of ways to pinch those things. There's just a couple of ideas for you. Another way is to use just, you know, like a long pair of needle nose pliers that's straight.